So this video is going to be a little bit different. Right behind me, as you can see here, I have the Atom T5Vs. Atom Audio were actually kind enough to send these to me, so thank you Atom Audio, I really do appreciate it. And it just came as really weird timing, because literally the day before that they emailed me about these, I bought the A5Xs myself. So over the past month and a bit, I've been switching over between my A5Xs and these T5Vs. There are thousands of videos on YouTube that review these exact monitors and tell you the exact same thing. So if you're expecting a really in-depth review on these in terms of like specifications and stuff like that, you've probably got the wrong video. I'm gonna be reviewing these monitors from the angle that a lot of the people that are watching this video are from, just like I am, a bedroom guitarist who just wants to make good mixes in their bedroom. I'm assuming that if you're watching my channel, you're a bedroom guitarist just like I am, and if you're anything like me, um, you do care about the specs, but you wanna know about more things than just the specs of the unit. For example, is this a good set of monitors to craft guitar tones using plugins? Are these monitors good enough to give you really good quality mixes that can translate anywhere? Are they worth your money? If you've ever watched an audio monitor review on YouTube, you notice that every single person says the exact same thing. They always say, it's impossible to tell you what they sound like, but I can try my best to explain it. So before we actually get stuck into it, I feel like it's important to talk about um, the monitors that I've used in the past and how I'm going about mixing and producing and doing all that stuff now. My first set of monitors ever was just a cheap pair of Mackies. Um, my friend had the exact same pair and they both broke for the exact same reason. So shortly after, we both got KIK Rocket 5s. If you click on any YouTube video from my channel in the past two years, you will notice those KRK Rocket 5s in the background. They serve me extremely well. However, after some time, after my ears kind of developed a little bit more, um, I noticed that there were some inconsistencies, especially in the low end, that I wasn't a massive fan of the KRKs, and I thought, well, as the channel's growing, as I'm bettering myself, why not just treat myself and get some really nice Atoms? And that's where the Atom A5Xs came in. Um, got them and literally a day later Adam emailed me asking if I wanted to try out these which I said yes It is important to mention that I usually do use Sonarworks sound ID reference So I do have room correction software running at all times whenever I'm in my room Whether I'm listening to music whether I'm mixing whether I'm playing games like it is always on all the time However for this video specifically I always made sure that it was not running whenever I was using these monitors Just so I can get in the headspace of someone that's watching this video and they might not have sound ID reference So the T5Vs are marketed as like a higher end bedroom producer set of monitors. These are worth about double what a set of KRK Rocket 5s are worth, and I'm only saying that because that was my reference before. And a set of A5Xs that are also by Adam Audio are worth double what these are worth. One thing that sets Adams apart from the rest in terms of the audio monitor marker are their tweeters. Their tweeters are almost like a little ribbon style tweeter, so it's like a piece of paper that's been folded over and over and over and over, squished together, and that's like the typical ribbon thing that you see as opposed to the circle one that you see on most other monitors. The main benefit of having that ribbon tweet is so that you can listen to things longer without getting as much ear fatigue and you also get a broader range of the higher frequencies of the spectrum. They're five inch speakers and in a bedroom setting, just like this one that I'm sitting in right now, this is a three meter by three meter room. I'm not sure how much that is in feet, but I'm sure you can work it out pretty quickly with a calculator. It's not that big of a room, especially when there's all this stuff in it, desk, bed, cupboard, drawers homemade bass trap. There is stuff everywhere. So I know that I don't need all that bass output. For example, I'm not gonna be running eight inch monitors in this room because it would just be way too overkill. So for my purposes, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys watching, the five inches are perfect. A couple of things that I was pleasantly surprised about about these T5Vs was that the high end clarity is very, very good. More than ever before, stuff in the high end, whether I'm mixing or making guitar tones, I can really hear it. Um, and it just makes life a little bit easier. Like when you're kind of notching out frequencies in a guitar tone or something, you can pinpoint it straight away and just duck it. That that was something I struggled with a little bit with the KRKs that I had before these. Um, they were a little bit mushy over the whole frequency spectrum now that I've tried these. Like it was very apparent when I changed them. The low end is also good. It's not really inconsistent like the KRKs. Like you really do hear everything, um, everything that you need to hear basically. And like I said before, um, finding problem areas are very easy on these monitors. One thing about these monitors that I also really enjoyed was that even though these are on the lower end of Adam Audio's catalog, um, the build quality is still really good. It's not as good as the A5Xs, which are down there. I'm looking at them right now. They are built like a tank. That's not to take anything away from the T5Vs behind me. For their price point, the build quality is really good. They do not feel flimsy at all. And that's one thing that I really, really, really don't like when you spend a lot of money on something um, that should feel premium and it doesn't. But that is not a problem with these because they feel great. Going to the back of the monitors, that's where all the nitty gritty stuff is. On the front, it's very clean and aesthetic, but when you go to the back, that's where your power switch is. That's where your low and high pass filter is. That's where your inputs are. All the stuff is living on the back to keep the front and sides clean. 
low and high pass switches are really helpful, especially if you're sitting near a wall or if you've got the monitors on a desk. If they're not on stands, you know, decoupled from the floor, they will be generating more bass. So you can kind of mediate that by taking it down 2 dB on each side. And if you want a little bit more high end in your referencing, you can just take the switch and take it up 2 dB. Volume knob actually feels really good. Um, one thing that I hate is flimsy feeling knobs, but these feel great. If you power them on from the back by flicking the switch, there's no like LED or something at the front that lights up. You have to look at the back to make sure that they're turned on. That might sound really nitpicky, but it's something that I've had on every other monitor that I've owned. And you know, it's not that much of an effort to kind of look behind my desk and see if it's on after I flicked it on. Um, it should be on when you flick it on anyway, but just to have that visual aid, it would be nice. Another thing that might bother some people is that there is no groove for the volume knob on zero dB. So when you're turning the volume knob, there's no way to tell if you're actually sitting dead center at zero dB. You can just get kind of as close as you can to it. It's a bit hard to tell, especially when the monitors are against the wall and you're kind of looking from the back and adjusting the volume, um, your kind of eyesight, line of eyesight is off. So it is hard to tell if it's on zero dB. Um, it would be nice if there was a little groove there, but again, it's not the end of the world um, and you'll probably be adjusting them anyway. So if I had to get in the minds of you and everyone else that watches this channel, you're probably like me where you had like a mid-range kind of monitor. Um, you've had them for a while and you might be thinking, is it worth upgrading? Am I gonna get anything out of it or should I just stay with these ones? As I mentioned before, coming from someone that had KRK Rocket Fires for a very long time, um, I definitely did notice the upgrade, especially with these ones behind me. Low end was more consistent, the higher ends were much easier to hear, stereo imaging was much better, like there is definitely a sweet spot with these monitors where if you tilt your head a couple centimeters to the left and right, you were definitely gonna notice it, um, and that couldn't be said for my KRKs, it was a little bit more mushy, if that makes sense. I guess the best thing I can say about the T5Vs behind me is that if I didn't budget and save for a little while for those A5Xs and I had to get something a little bit cheaper, I would definitely just get these because these are the best in their price range by far. In terms of sound quality, build quality and aesthetics, there is nothing in this price range that would even come close to these, I can guarantee it. I'm sure it's not only me, but if I was thinking about getting monitors, if I saw the name Adam Audio, I would already be confident that they're going to be great. And that's no different from these T5Vs, um, whether it's A5Xs, T5Vs, or the really high-end models that are like a couple grand for a pair. Anything Adam Audio is just going to sound great and it is going to improve your mixes. This is predominantly a guitar channel, so I should probably mention that crafting guitar tones, whether they were heavy, uh, low gain, clean, crunch, lead, super weird ambient tones there was not a problem at all on these monitors because everything translated really well and i found no issues in translating the tone that i heard into my head back out in the monitors and that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much to adam audio for sending these through they are phenomenal and i'm definitely going to be recommending these to a lot of people if they're in the market for these type of monitors if you guys like this video at any time please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard and if you want to see more of this stuff definitely think about subscribing Thank you to all my Patreons. Thank you, Adam Audio, again. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.